Hey guys, so I am currently working on this little backyard sketch for a client and I wanted to just quickly go over a tool that um, I use on a daily basis, but I don't see a whole um, lot of other uh, people using it or, or mentioning it. Um, so I thought it was worth just kind of quickly throwing this out there. Uh, and the tool that I'm referring to is, is actually the grid. Uh, but beyond just setting this grid, you know, to uh, one inch equals 20 for this particular drawing, uh, one thing that we can actually do is modify this grid to be able to use snap functions when you have um, an, a situation like this where your home or structure is, you know, straight aligned to a perfect grid here, but then you have a property line that's kind of running off to the side. We have this mother-in-law suite back here that's um, you know, just slightly off angle. Uh, so I wanted to quickly show you guys a way to be able to accommodate those different lines without having to uh, go in and try and struggle with the, the smoothness tool to, you know, try and get perpendicular lines um, that normally come out not perfectly perpendicular. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start a new layer, which I already did. Um, and then I'm actually gonna come up here. I always take this layer, this custom layer, which is your grid layer, um, and I always move it to the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and click on that grid layer. And this is just a typical grid. Um, I have it set at <laughs> one inch 20. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this now. And um, one thing I need to do is do a 10 foot offset of this property line so that we know where uh, that the pool isn't into that easement. So I'm gonna take this center point here of the grid um, marker and I'm going to line it up on my property line. Now there's a little grab node right here. So I'm gonna click and hold on that and you see that it allows me to kind of move this around. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna line that up with my property line. Now, once I come over here and enable the snap function and go back to my layer, when I draw, it is a line perfectly to that property line. So, you know, if they wanted to, uh, more than just drawing the, um, you know, easement, if they wanted to come in here and let's say line up a vegetable garden somewhere off of this property line, I can draw all of those markings perfectly perpendicular and parallel uh, to that property line and know with confidence that I'm, I'm, I'm fairly aligned to it. So what I'm gonna do is come in here and quickly figure out, got my measure and everything on. So my 10 foot easement is roughly about there. So I'm gonna back up and then bring this line weight up the hair and I'm gonna draw that easement in. Um, and then I can come back and, you know, race out for whatever type of line type I want. Like so, and get rid of that line. Um, and then, so this extends beyond just being able to do different lines and everything. It also extends over into um, some of the material brushes, uh, particularly like right here, this is a breezeway that's got a corrugated roof cover on it. And I wanna be able to show that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my grid back up and I'm going to again, align the center of my grid marker to one of the, some area on the line there. Use that node to grab. I'm gonna line it up with that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go start another layer and we'll just call this one, uh, something simple, we'll just call it roof for now. And then I'm gonna bring my marker down just a little bit so it's not overly large. And then that breezeway starts there and I'm just gonna kind of quickly line out where that breezeway begins and ends. I didn't have my grid perfectly lined up so let's go get that line back up where it needs to be. That way, when I make these long runs, it's all nice and in line. And so this is kind of pointing out one of the issues that I was talking about earlier is the lines that are originally uh, under this, I actually did those with my 
smoothness set to 100 and you can see how they didn't quite turn out parallel like I like I thought I was drawing so I'm just gonna pop over here really quick select that line can yeah we'll just see all that and start back over on it our grids already aligned right there so what I'm gonna do is bring this back down um, and then we'll draw that line in where it's supposed to go And we'll come back up to our roof layer. Bring our line weight back up. Snap back on. Now I can draw that roof line in for the breezeway. And so what I was getting at before all that is this extends beyond just being able to do line work with it, right? So one thing that we can use it for is, for instance, the panel here. Um, so I come down here and this I use this for a lot of different things from wood textures to uh, corrugated, you know, corrugated uh, material for roof lines, uh, siding, all that great stuff. So that's the panel wall texture. Well, when I come here and like, let's say I wanted to just use that panel wall texture to emulate what that corrugated roof line be doing, you can see that it's not perpendicular to that, right? I have my grid already set up over there. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to click on that grid. And what I can do is I can get that grid. And once I grab the grid, you'll see that the number up here shows 55 degrees, right? So then I know what that angle is. So I'm going to come over here back to my panel tool and I'm going to go down and go to grain rotation. And so I'll look at the number over here as I increase that. So it's now 55 degrees to match what was on there. But see what's gonna happen is that's gonna make it line up with that. So that's not what we want, right? It's supposed to go perpendicular. So I'm going to go back to that and we will just go to edit. And we're gonna come over here, back down to our green rotation. And then what we're gonna do is we need this to turn 90 degrees. So we're simply just gonna say 55 plus 90 gives us 145. So that's gonna let me know I need to increase this up to 145. And that's good. So now when I come in, that a little bit. That texture is now aligned to that grid. And this would be used way more useful for when I go to draw in the metal roofing on this structure here, right? Uh, because I'll be able to come in and set one of my prominent lines. And since all of these are within a right angle of each other, won't have to change it around a bunch, right? So I can come in here now and can draw the walls. I know the front porch actually runs right there. And then so what we could do is we can come in and draw the roof on top of that. And we can see the roof's doing a couple of different things. There's a gable end right here. Um, and then there's gables on both of those sides. And then they have a lean-to style shed deal on the back there. And then I'm just gonna quickly kind of pop these in right here just so I can see the lines and just go ahead and trace it out. Um, and so now, there again, I'm gonna go back to my grid uh layer and we have that lined up with that and we can see that that's at 350 right so we can come in with our panel tool again that we're going to be using for the roofing and i'm going to set that to 350 on the rotation there and so all the ones that are going to be going this way, which is mainly just this gable area right here, I can come in now and texture those in. And you can also go in and change the scale of this if you want it to be uh, smaller or larger, uh, what have you. And so now I'm at 350. I know I need to back that out by 90. So that is going to give me what? 350, uh, 260 it should be. About where I need to be aiming for. 
Let's see if my quick math is right. Yeah, close enough. So then we'll get that textured in here. And that is going to give me my roof line. And you don't have to texture this thing in fully wall to wall. Um, you can, you know, just touch on some areas. You can also kind of go back over some areas if you want to. And it'll darken it up just a hair. As you can see, we wanted to maybe bring in a little bit darker notation on some of the emphasis points like the ridge, some of these little eaves here. And so there you go. Uh, just a quick and easy way that you can use the grid tool. So we're gonna go and actually set that back to zero. When you see that blue dashed line, it's letting you know that it'll automatically snap back to that, whether it be zero or 90. And now you're good to go back in line with your original structure um, and can switch this up to get to any of these other alignments uh, throughout the project. Hope this helps.